Hi guys! Did you know that RevoPoint has released a new 3D scanner? It's true, and it's called POP3. You want to know all the details about this new scanner? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui, and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, after the launch of the first scanner called POP, then the POP2, the MINI and the RANGE, now RevoPoint launched the new POP3. This new scanner has some hardware improvements when compared with the previous models. It's possible to get the scanner as the standard edition or as the advanced edition. The difference between them is the number of accessories you get with the scanner. Inside the box of the POP3 scanner, this is what we have. One calibration board, some instructions, a USB Type-C adapter, a bag with some markers, a black plastic sheet and glue tag, the round pad for the turntable, a small turntable, a round board with markers for the turntable, a tripod for the scanner, an adapter for a smartphone, some cables, the traditional test bust, and finally the scanner. This new model is equipped with extra lights next to the RGB camera and also dual infrared LEDs next to the depth cameras. At the back, there's a USB Type-C to connect the scanner to a computer and three touch buttons. Same as the previous models, the POP3 is also equipped with Wi-Fi for remote connection. And this is the turntable. It's 125 mm in diameter and it's powered by USB. The green LED indicates that there's power connected to the turntable. At the side, there is an on and off switch. The same switch can change from clockwise to counterclockwise direction. There is also a small potentiometer to control the speed of the turntable. The tripod that comes with the scanner is the same that comes with previous models. It's very handy and can be extended. Ok, and this is everything that came inside the package. For the first test, we will scan the test bus that came with the scanner. To connect the scanner to the computer, we need to connect the USB Type-C cable to the scanner and lock it with the flat screwdriver. The other end of the cable is connected to a USB 3.0 connector on the computer. RevoPoint has a dedicated web page just for the software. RevoScan5, which is the software we will use to scan, is available for Windows, Mac, Android and iPhone. With the Android or iPhone apps, you can use the scanner together with a smartphone instead of a computer. After loading the RevoScan5 software, we noticed that it was able to recognize our scanner without installing any additional drivers. Clicking on the small gear, it's possible to get the model and serial number of our scanner, set up the scanner's Wi-Fi and start a calibration. Clicking on New Project, we enter the main environment of the software. There are several tools available that we can use and it's also possible to scan and process the scan data automatically or manually. At the left, we can see the view from the depth camera and at the bottom, the view from the RGB camera. On both cases, it's possible to set the gain automatically or manually. There's an additional button to turn the lights on the scanner on or off. At the right side, we can choose some scan settings such as the accuracy, tracking mode and object type. It's also possible to enable or disable the scan of color. 
the hide surfaces button will help to avoid the scan of some unwanted surfaces. There's also the scanning distance setup and the buttons to connect some accessories such as a dual axis turntable or handheld stabilizer. At the bottom, there are some instructions. These instructions are available for each button or feature we select. It was a good idea to add the selective instructions here at the side and they come very handy. At the top bar, there are several options that we can use to process the scan data if we prefer to do it manually. Ok, now for the scan of the bust. Pressing New Scan will start the scan. The best technique is to let the model rotate a single turn and then change the model's orientation. At that time, we can pause the scan and when ready, resume the scan. The software will recognize the model's features and stitch the new orientation to the previous orientation. When we decide that the scan is done, we click on Complete. Although the scan is done, we still need to process the scan data. As we mentioned, we can process manually or automatically. To do it automatically, we just need to click on Apply here at the right side. If we are not happy with the results, we can manually run each one. Since we were not very thorough while scanning, the scan didn't end that much perfect and with some holes on the mesh. The program can detect these holes and we just select which ones we want to close to fix it. At the end, we can export the model to an STL file. This is how the model looks like when loading the STL file that we exported into a slicer software. Looks very nice. If we open the same file on a CAD software, we can see the detailed mesh that was created. We then printed the bust model on one of our printers, and this is how it turned out. Next, we tried a small ceramic figure and we scanned it with the color capture enabled. The small graphic at the right side indicates the distance from the scanner to the model, and it's a very good tool that we always need to keep an eye on. The goal is to try and keep the model's distance at the excellent range. Ok, done. Once again, let's go through the automatic data process and see how it behaves. The ideal is to process the data manually because you will end up with better results, but for the new user, we know that it's not that simple. There has to be a learning stage to know and get comfortable with all the parameters available. Ok, this is how it turned out after the automatic data processing and fixing the holes on the mesh. And this is how it looks like on the Slicer software. The scan turned out great, so we can 3D print this as is if we want. Unfortunately, the color data cannot be used on our traditional 3D printers. But, if you have a 3D printer capable of printing with multiple filament spools, you can paint the model and print it like this example right here. For the next test, we use this small cupcake. We had to scan this several times because every time we turned the cupcake and resumed the scan, it would not stitch both orientations correctly. This can happen if the model you are trying to scan does not have distinctive features. For this example, the entire blue section of the model looks the same all around, and the upper part also looks very similar. To make this work, we need to add markers on the model so that the software can recognize. In our case, we tried a few times and the trick was to resume the scan when the only distinctive mark, which was the red fruit at the top, was facing the camera and this way the software would use it as reference to stitch. Mm -hmm. 
and this is how it looks like on the Slicer software. Next, we try scanning a more complex model. Although this is a small model, it's rich in detail. The scanner had no issues scanning the head section of the model. However, for the areas painted blue, the scanner had more trouble scanning those. Increasing the gain on the depth camera would help, but it would cause the other areas to be overexposed. For this case, we would have to spray the model with a special spray for scanning. There are a few of them on the market. We tested these on the past and they worked very well. They add a very thin coat that the scanner can capture very easily. The downside of using these sprays is that we lose the ability of capturing the model's color. We loaded the model anyway without the use of the spray and this is the result. We can see that the areas where the model was painted blue are smooth because they were fixed in post-processing. The remaining areas look very nice and the scanner was able to capture the details nicely. The same thing happens when trying to scan models with dark areas on them. This drill has lots of dark areas and to try and scan it we tried boosting the gain on the depth camera and also the dark objects option. The red areas were captured fine, but for the dark areas, not all of them have been captured correctly. For this case, the use of the spray is also a must. Next, we scan this tall model. We used this one before since it's a model with lots of small details. For this one, we were not concerned about capturing the entire model, but the details instead. As a result of that, the top of the head has a few gaps. Anyway, the details that we wanted to check were captured. The fur and the shirt look very detailed. To test a very small model, we used this rubber duck. It does not have many details, but it has enough features and small size to test the scanner. The result is this cute duck. The duck's features are still there after scanning. The last figure we scanned was this bigger model. We had to make several passes in order to capture the entire model. After the scanning was complete, we ended up with lots of noise floating around the model. The automatic data processing was able to clean most of the noise. There were just a couple of areas that needed cleaning. The software can also repair some of those issues, but for this we have to do it manually. At the right side we have some tools we can use to select areas and delete them if we need to. With those areas cleaned, this is how the model turned out. Pretty nice, we must say. We also printed this model, but with a smaller size. And this is how it turned out. As you can see, the printed version is very close to the original. Scanning a person might be a little bit more tricky, because of the dark colors issue. We gave it a try and this is how it turned out. Like we mentioned before, a bit of practice and experience is a must to reach better results. If we compare this new model with the previous POP2, we can see that most of the spec characteristics are very similar. However, the new POP3 is a little bit faster while scanning, the new lights make the scanning capability a bit better and the Wi-Fi is also faster. The three touch buttons are also a nice improvement when compared with the previous mechanical button. The software has been improved a lot since the previous models and that is also a big part of the scanning success. If you want to check our review videos of the previous models, check the description for the links. And that's it you guys, thanks for watching. We will see you guys next time. Bye!